definitely has a sense of we're sideways. Why are we sideways? What do you mean we're sideways? It says we're sideways. Wait a minute. Hello, everybody. Hi, everybody. Let's see if we can get um, this to So now we can tell that we haven't done this in a while. Is that correct? Let's. They, if you do that, it's going to fall. Happy Bear. So, for those who are tuning in, uh, are we sideways? Mom, are we sideways? Hey, there's Doug. Let us know. Comment. Hey, Doug. Doug's Martin sideways. Doug. Now, I think Doug is actually oriented Martin. the correct way. I think you're. I think you're oriented the correct way. Are we and sideways? We're going to take you on a little ride. If you. Woo. Now, how's that? Wow. Are we better? You're not talking with me. Can, can you tell it's been a while that, uh, since we've done this? What? We were live just last week. What are you talking about? I know. I don't know uh, what you mean. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, well, actually, uh, that's probably a good point you bring up, Doug. I, I think that we maybe uh, need to apologize to the folks out there for last week. Uh, apparently, our, uh, our, our normal uh, Union Stories broadcast was hijacked by uh, a trio of luchadors. Um, I like awesome in a mask, though. I'll, I wear masks and hats well. W one of those luchadors was even topless, from my understanding, and so we, we would like to apologize to, uh, to anyone who was offended uh, out there. Uh, and if you didn't see it, hopefully this is enough to encourage you to go back and, and watch the little bit of insanity we'll that was it. Union Stories last week. It's very and share with He's your really friends. proud of his moves. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome everyone to this week's Hi, uh, Union Stories, where we are always live on Tuesday evenings at 8 o'clock. And in the same room. <laughs> Except for Doug, who is apparently as part of our family photo, just slightly <laughs> above uh, the two of us over our shoulder. I like it. Uh, and you can put me in any room you want me to. I know. Yeah, around, so. I like that. It's like the Brady Bunch. I don't know. It just feels like it in there. Sadly, we are getting and closer and closer to the uh, end of our Union Story series uh, as we work our way towards the end of the album now. We are on uh, song number 10 out of 12, so... Uh... <laughs> High five me, Doug. That's awesome. What is it that we're discussing this week, folks? You asked me to. Um, hey, hey, wake up. A few more trips. Um, which uh, is, as it turns out, one of the uh, oldest songs. I, I actually consider it ground zero uh, for what became Storytellers Union because it was this song that, um, that Doug used to sort of uh, get me back I I into a writing uh, mode. Um, I don't know, Doug, if it was your intention at the time that that was uh, what you were trying to do, but... Essentially, about 20 years ago, uh, when we there was not a band or anything at the time, we were uh, not doing any recording or anything like that. But uh, Doug had been trying to convince me that it was a good idea, and and I, I for whatever reason just thought that I was reluctant, didn't think there was time or what have you. And then you approached me with a problem of, hey, I got this chorus, uh, I need some help with verses. And as you know, Doug doesn't, you know, Doug writes a ton of music. Uh, doesn't necessarily write uh, a lot of lyrics, so uh, I should have been curious right away that he was trying to, to trick me uh, to throw out a fishing line or something. But was it your intention to try to, uh, you know, uh, soft pedal me into a band? See, I'm all about the long game, you know, I kind of like think like a dragon or a vampire, so it took 20 years, but you know, I planted the seeds <laughs> long ago. <laughs> And eventually we got there. <laughs> it, it, it worked. It was successful in your attempt. Uh, Doug came to me, and he had already had the, uh, the, the chorus to what became a few more trips completely written. And then I went and uh, wrote the verses uh, to it. But uh, 
So in that way, this is kind of the original Storytellers Union song. Uh, I think we mentioned on an earlier uh, podcast that, uh, you know, as far as the age of lyrics go, uh, um, Walk of Fame probably is the oldest song in our catalog, just because I'd always been writing lyrics and those lyrics go back uh, a long time. But I'd say this is probably the second oldest song uh, in our catalog because uh, this probably dates to around 2000, would you think? I, I, I'm going to say earlier than 2000 because I wrote the chorus part about a few more trips while watching an episode of Roseanne when I was working overnight when I worked at Fox uh, as a master control operator. So I'm going to say that was late to mid 90s. Okay. And I know and I know musically the music for it is even older because I wrote that when I was in Dayton living with a luscious dog and one of the mighty schmucks. So uh, I didn't realize that the song was actually that much older than uh, even before you probably presented it to me. So the, the, the tune itself had been kicking around for a while. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, absolutely. The, the chord progression to the verse had been kicking around since, gosh, I, um, I want to say 95-ish oh, wow. maybe. Okay. Yeah, every, uh, I think it was every Wednesday, uh, Jamie Smith and David Lovely and I were living together in Dayton. We, we weren't living together in Dayton every Wednesday. It was every day, not just Wednesdays. But every Wednesday, we would, um, we would all gather around the TV around like 9 to 10 o'clock at night. And, and there was a Fox show uh, that came on before the syndicated show that we watched. We always watched Babylon 5 and Star Trek Deep Space Nine. And we would always catch the end of A Party of Five. And if I remember correctly, the party of five always ended with like the family all gathering around like a, like a table at a restaurant. And they always had the same tables because there was a party of five of them. So Dave and I constructed uh, more inter what we thought were more interesting backgrounds for all the family. Like one of them was a shapeshifter and one of them was a vampire and all this. Then it let then it led into our <laughs> science fiction vision for the rest of the night. But during one of those one of those episodes, as that show was closing, we were waiting for our shows to come on. I grabbed, I think it was Jamie's acoustic guitar, and started hammering around um, something something that was kind of Wonderwallish. That I was I was thinking, oh, this is kind of Wonderwallish, and then you know, I started like playing around with it. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. I'll have to do something with it eventually. So the verse the verse chord progression came from one of those. Uh, waiting for our sci-fi shows right before, right after Party of Five, <laughs> way back in the day. I had no Party idea. And, you know, like we were talking just the other day, um, just, just the other day, you know, we were talking about how, you know, the song's really bored of television because the music came from waiting for, you know, it was either Deep Space Nine or Babylon 5, maybe they were back to back, but anyway, something on some sort of sci-fi show, and then when I was working at Fox, um, late at night, there's not a lot to do if you've ever been a master control operator in a TV station. You know, you put the you put the oh, show on, yeah. you dub commercial. You, I know, yeah, yeah. Well, and today I imagine this is, everything's completely automated uh, in today. Uh, but then, you know, at least you could switch commercials. Um, but I would sit around and just watch a lot of TV shows at night because I was running them. And there's one where uh, the episode of um, Roseanne where John Goodman has the heart attack and then he's like in, in the hospital basically having a conversation with the universe about how he just needs a few more trips around the sun to get some uh, some things right and I was like oh that's that's an interesting concept you know barter bartering with your maker to uh, to to get a few more a few more years out of life to get to to right some wrongs and things like that and that's where that came from. Of course, it was all part of my long game to seduce you back into a, a musical operation. <laughs> well, it, like I said, it worked like a charm because uh, I remember loving the chorus from the moment you presented it to me. Uh, and then I did go about uh, rewriting the verses. Um, or not rewriting, I guess, writing the verses. Uh, I could maybe even make an argument that uh, I overwrote them because um, for the longest time, um, oh I became, uh, well, maybe it's because the song ha has such a, a long lineage and it hung around out there so much. But if I go back and I look at my uh, lyric sheets, I will see like just constant rewriting, uh, going back to previous versions, then chunking that. And I, I just never, I never changed the thing about your chorus, but I changed the verses constantly. Constantly. He was always like annoyed and it's not like Kevin do you know you know Kevin it's like always Mr. One and Done you know and it's like you know 
Mr. One Take, like it, yeah, you know. But this song he wrestled with for so long, and no, oh, I don't like that, and I don't like that. I don't, is I'm gonna rewrite this, and yeah, yeah. And so uh, because of that, I just thought that it was one of those songs that you know there were elements of it I liked, but in general, I became, <laughs> I actually began to to not so much care for the song itself uh, as a whole. Um, but musically, it's gone through uh, uh, quite a number of, of musical transitions, I guess, because it has kicked around for so long. When I go looking in through the archives, there is just about every imaginable style of uh, a treatment given to this uh, a song. Yeah, and, and that's the thing, because I was listening to some of the stuff that you put in Dropbox, and I realized that, you know, musically it really has not changed at all as far as like a yeah. chord progression, the chord progressions for the verses and the choruses. However, stylistically, I think, you know, it's been everything but lo-fi trip off <laughs> at this point. And I know at one point there was, there was a reggae mix. Challenge him. Don't challenge him. He'll, he'll do it. I'm going to keep looking up at you. Actually, I'm going to play a snippet of what it's it was the, the, I, I know that it dated, I, I thought it dated at least to the uh, early, uh, late 90s, early 2000s. The earliest version I still have is from 2003. And I'm just going to cue that up. Just play a few seconds so folks can see how far it came. Taste. So you got your double track vocals and it's it's more of a piano pop piece at that point. I know uh, from there it got, uh, you know, you'd strip it down some and, and we have some that are more folky. Uh, and then at another point, yeah, gosh, that, that version there from 2003 was kind of a blueprint for maybe the next 10 years worth of versions. Uh, and then about like four or five years ago, uh, and maybe you can walk us through this, Doug, you had the idea to maybe rock it up some because it had always been this folk number. Yeah, this is definitely, I, I think what you're about to play is definitely a, a White Stripes uh, influenced version. You think? <laughs> <laughs> now, at least let it play through the vocals here so you can see how that is going. So by the time you get to the, the chorus, it, again, just like the lyrics never changed all that much, it, it's more reminiscent of the chorus of the, of the final version. But yeah, I think part of it was my dissatisfaction with the song and, and you're just relentless, like always tinkering, that somehow we went way stylistically different. And in fact, that version at one point in time, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Doug, was, was, was so well liked, at least by the two of us, I know Jerry did not like it at all, that it was almost considered that this was maybe the final version and was around the time of the first album even considered as, as maybe something we would put on. Is that your recollection? Yeah, fortunately, Jerry has good taste and, and can talk us off, off a cliff Thank sometimes. You. Yeah, that was... <laughs> yeah, I didn't like, because I didn't like that vocal or anything. That's not, refer... not a good version. Yeah, I think I referred to it as, Kevin, who's pulling your underwear? to get you to sing to that point. He was like, eh, eh, eh. yeah, I was like, mm, no. I, uh, I, I agree that uh, I don't know where, where we walked out onto that ledge uh, at, at that point in time, but uh, we did walk back and <laughs> came up with, uh, you know, something, but. you know, yes, came back, but. Uh, I still, even though we were back to uh, the, the skeleton of the song, very similar to had, had it, as it had always been, um, it took me 
just completely ditching like the second verse to finally find my way back into the song. It was the second verse that I had always been tinkering with and going back and forth between a couple of options. And so what I decided to do to see if it would help me is just completely toss it out and start completely fresh. Like He's like ready to scrap this song. I wanted to take what ended up being one of our oldest set, like most everything in on the last album, in, in both albums really, they didn't wear from 20 years to like at least five years. So everything was a little older. And this was one of the last songs to come together for the album. And I thought, you know, I would love to take um, maybe or some of our oldest set of lyrics. And if I'm going to redo any of it, uh, we had nothing that was really current as far as uh, at least my writing that was current that sort of spoke to our modern day and not to get political or anything like that. But there was, I had an urge to like, at least during this very interesting time in our history uh, with sort of the national malaise that's going on. I think that, you know, there was always this sunny uh, uh, like melody that Doug had, had come up with and, and, but this really kind of, uh, you know, apocalyptic, like, you know, chorus where, you know, it sounds like time could be possibly running out. And I wrote the verses that way so many years ago. And I thought, you know, our times and the sort of national mal uh, uh, malaise we find ourselves in now so much uh, speaks to that original intent behind the song. It would be great to sort of update it. And that's what I did with the second verse. I, I kind of brought it into uh, modern times, talked about our modern situation. But I was not done uh, quite yet with the uh, uh, with, with the uh, tinkering because once I was done with that, I was very happy with the way the lyrics turned out. But I also felt that now I had a very pessimistic song that lacked any sort of like, but maybe there's a chance that we can change this trajectory or that, you know, where's the hope? Where's the... Uh, Where's the uh, cream to cut the bitterness of the coffee? And that's where I came up with the hey, 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 wake up uh, refrain. And, you know, it was one of those things I just kind of went with. And I thought, you know, I was here alone by myself one uh, Saturday. And I what spent all day, I spent all day just layering that, that, uh, that, uh, what ended up being, you know, sort of a secondary hook in the song. Um, and, I came and uh, Jerry came back home one day and I said, all right, now listen to this and give an honest opinion. It's Can not going to be like any of the last 15 years worth of it. I've made some changes and I don't think she was expecting that. Yeah. So I was curious about, I was basically curious as to who let like the Partridge family in the basement. And cause it was all like, you know, this like, hey, hey, hey. And he was like, you know. She hated it. I hated she it. She hated it. I hated it. Um, so he was like, basically, just lay down back backing vocals and let's just see what happens, which, you know, I mean, we can, we have a tendency to do that. And so I thought, okay, so he was gone. Um, and I had the basement to myself and was just kind of, and I'm literally like, I'm just, I'm hating it. I'm sarcastically like appeasing my husband and doing this, like, okay, I'll do it. And I think I'm sitting down there with a drink at the microphone, like, and I thought, you know, cause all I could see was like, like the Brady girls, like doing some stupid dance. And like, it was like, you know, and and I'm just at the microphone going, hey, 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 wake up. Hey, 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 wake up. And, you know, and it was just like. And, Hi, and, Linda. Hey, Linda Brock. And I go, you know, just a few more chips. And I would just have a stupid smile on my face. And I was literally just sarcastically doing every bit of it. And. Yeah, this flower power kind of addition, uh, I wasn't sure about, but the more I listened to it, the more, the more, listened, yeah, the more it started yeah. sinking into my own head, and I found myself singing. I'm like, if it if it's sticking in my head, it may just work. And so I was kind of giving it over to like, okay, and this is usually, this is where it helps that we're a three-piece and not a four-piece where we can end up with uh, two two ties. 
Uh, well, we usually do put it to a vote, and it's always, you know, it's usually two to one. Uh, two? No. To one. No. Because <laughs> you guys all buddy up and if that was the case, pack it. If that was and... the case, we'd have had a very different video for the, uh, for uh, the can't, uh, can't think of anything else. So sometimes I am also outvoted. It doesn't always work out. Oh, no. So in this instance, uh, Doug, <laughs> Doug heard it and he, and he liked it. <laughs> So Jerry kind of got outvoted, and then she started to come around to it. <laughs> when you had no choice, what else were you going to do? And then we also knew we had something, Doug. I think that our, our biggest uh, arbitrator of like, hey, maybe maybe we not only have added to the song, maybe we have given the, uh, something that's actually hookier than the chorus, is uh, when Liam began yeah. uh, to, <laughs> to become a, quite a fan of this tune. <laughs> It's good enough for me. Yeah, he's still to the day for it by noon. He wants to hear, hey, hey, wake up. <laughs> and I thought if we got the kids, then, you know, we, we got something. And I think that uh, David Poole, has, uh, he and Katie have mentioned to uh, us before that their little boy, uh, you know, once the video came out. JD you know, likes, yeah, hey, got hey, a, wake up. Got sent a picture, and there he is just, like, glued to the, you know, to the TV mm -hmm. watching it. So, uh, yeah, we definitely. Uh, We're going to make him like long games. See, I mean, this for the long game. You know, it's not about the immediate fix. You know, long game. So is there actually is there a reason that you uh, you know when it came time to do a video treatment, is it the uh, the hey 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 wake up part? Is, is any of that play into your like you know we could turn this into a cartoon? Honestly, I knew Liam really really liked the song, so I wanted to do something for him. So I I, I made an animated video for him for the song. I mean, yeah, and it was <laughs> that's, perfect. That's what we're really doing. Yeah, actually, there, there's probably not another song uh, on the album I can think of that would have uh, fared as well as a as an animated, uh, uh, you know, cartoon as uh, "Hey Hey Wake Up," <laughs> uh, you know, seeing the elephant and the lion and the uh, hey, really? hey, and uh, you know, Jerry uh, as the shortest member of the band being made into the giraffe might be my favorite uh, uh, part of that whole video. Yeah, because, you know, if you... Never realized the irony in that until just now. <laughs> I, I thought for sure Doug has done that on purpose to make Jerry the giraffe. Yeah, the... Uh, the I think if a couple weeks ago our, our uh, live session with me there front and center between the two of you realizing I am really short and you guys are talking behind me... Uh, at least it was good to be a tall giraffe. And uh, it ended up being one of our uh, most watched videos. So, you know, uh, whether it's the video, the song, the combination of the way that the, the video enhances the song, which obviously a video should do. Um, I think uh, looking again uh, over the over the long haul as you know, we made some of these very stylistic uh, decisions uh, in a song that's 20 years old. Uh, going from a simple little pop uh, number to trying it as a, a Led Zeppelin, uh, Led Zeppelin-like uh, rocker to stripping it back down, uh, adding new verses, adding a '60s flower power chorus. And, you know, there was a lot of different changes this song uh, under underwent, and the way it ended up being received uh, makes me think that uh, we we must have landed somehow, uh, probably haphazardly <laughs> and by complete accident. Uh, on the on the correct choices. That's where you do most things, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> For all I know, you're still tinkering with it and you're still changing it. So you know, I'm working on it right now. Yeah, <laughs> that's actually one I will say that I was so happy to uh, finally see uh, put to bed uh, because it had been yeah. uh, there were more versions of that than any other song, and to know that, that that one was finally done and I didn't have to worry about trying to find a way to like it. In fact. I was so dissatisfied at one point with my own self, with my own like verses and everything else that Jerry had actually suggested to me that, you know, well, maybe I could sing it. Uh, she was going to, you were yeah, going oh, to yeah. lead Yeah, me. because he was like ready to scrap this. I mean, it was really to that point where it was like, I'm tired of this. We've done this song so many times. I've never been satisfied with it. And, and it wasn't that long ago. I mean, it was, you know, it was one of the songs we finished later on. And, and I was like, I've always liked this song. If you have that much of a problem with it, if it's that, you know, I'll, I'll do it. And he, and then 
all of a sudden the challenge accepted oh, no. right? <laughs> I, I mean i don't know i'm not saying that i don't like it so i th- I, I i think maybe that helped you know kind i of, think she kicked me into gear and like well if you're well, gonna, giving up my song you're gonna take my song and let me find another way around and i do think that we ended up with uh, just enough a uh, mix of the pessimism and the verses uh, with the uh, optimism and hope uh, presented in both uh, Doug's chorus and, uh, and, and the additional like little bridge there uh, that uh, I'm very, very happy with the way that the results turned out and appreciate everyone who uh, commented uh, once we released it, who shared the video, uh, who played along with our little cartoon characters as we changed our avatars around and, and things like that. But uh, yeah, this was definitely one that ended up being a whole lot more fun uh, than I uh, ever imagined it was going to be when we first started on the road. I kind of thought it was going to be one of those tunes, uh, kind of like American Empire, Carefree Girl, and, and you know these are titles that the, these two will know, but no one else will know because there are those songs that we kind of done and kind of maybe put a little bit more to the side uh, and decided we weren't going to do anything with. I thought it would, this would be one of those that we'd probably work on for the rest of our lives and never be happy with it and therefore never put it out. And it, instead, I think we got the definitive version. Yeah, agreed. I just never knew that Party of Five had anything to do with it. Yeah, I didn't realize Party of Five had anything to do with it. That's yeah, I, I, we didn't actually call it Party of Five, but maybe we did. But there was uh, there was I remember Nev Campbell was a shapeshifter. Uh, That's all yeah. I really remember. Yeah, Nev Campbell was the. She was a shapeshifter. I, I don't remember that about that show, but yeah, she, I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm pretty sure Dave would, would disagree with, with that. That you know. It, He'll say she's a she shape shifter. Shape Dave shape says shape. lots of things. Yeah. yeah, I don't believe anything Dave said. <laughs> he is a mighty smoke. So. <laughs> Hi, Linda. And uh, so, you know, I, I guess, I mean, unless you guys have anything else, uh, that, that's kind of the story of a few more trips. It's my story. I'm sticking to it. Well, that's all I got. Well, and Doug, we'll, 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 I agree that there's like a Brady Bunch thing going on tonight. I feel like Doug is up here. Yeah. In this. We need somebody over here. Yeah, we need. And then there's yeah. like our picture right we here. So that wouldn't work. And then, if we, to do that, we'd have to add another member of the band. <laughs> and then that would be four people. <laughs> and then everything, like the disputes we were discussing earlier, would end in two two ties and we'd never get anything done. That's, That's true. The way we all became the Brady Bunch. Maybe we can uh, take one of those luchadors from last week, and, and if any of them actually can play drums, we can invite them to join the band. We're waiting for Liam. So wait a minute. Should we cover the Brady Bunch theme song? Is that what I'm getting out of yeah. all this? <laughs> that we need like a cover of the Brady Bunch yeah. theme song in like a certain style? Maybe multiple styles. Yeah, oh, yes. Yeah, so. Multiple styles. Oh, no. Kevin Let's is- do it as a Jack White rocker. I want to sing like that again. So Kevin and I heard a song. We heard a song in Ireland that we fell in love with and we wanted to do a cover of. Was it a U2 song? We actually heard no U2 songs while we were in Ireland. That is not at all true. (laughs) That's all they literally played at the Guinness Storehouse. Oh, oh, that is true. Yeah, at the Guinness Storehouse. I was just thinking like on the radio and places like that. But yes, in the Guinness Storehouse, that was pretty much all they played. But I mean, like, yeah, it was a little on the nose. You're in Ireland, you're in the Guinness Storehouse, and we thought, oh, it was that's hilarious. They're playing you too. And then we waited for the next song. And so the next like, song. You too, Roy Gallagher, and uh, Thin Lizzy, then? Uh, <laughs> Those are the three big Irish names, and, and, right? And you forgot Van Morrison. Van yeah. Oh, Van Morrison. We and heard every last one of those while we were over there. Yes, heard Thin Lizzy, heard Van Morrison. Yeah, but uh, actually, we have some really uh, we have uh, and and actually uh, the store uh, storytellers union page probably would be a good page to do it uh, since it's music related. Uh, I haven't posted any of these pictures, but we did get some YouTube related uh, photos. Did you see it? Uh, um, while we were uh, over there, and we'll we'll post it to the to the page. So for you YouTube fans, we did do some. Uh, did you see it, Doug? Visiting. We didn't send anything. Oh, we didn't send it. I, I thought we sent it. it. So in other words, Doug, did you look mm-hmm. into our phones when we weren't around and see did them? You? No, I've got people who do that for okay. me, so and then report back to me. I've got a shapeshifter on, on the payroll. Part a master controller, right? <laughs> All right, we're going to master control ourselves out of here, so Doug can get back to watching TV. Yeah, I got to find it for thirty-four. So Doug can get back to watching TV, so he can be inspired to uh, write more songs for us. Oh yeah, yeah, you're kind of slacking, Doug. 
I'm not slacking. Yeah. I got like I got like an entire like prog metal album band ready 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 for lyrics. Hey, that's what point. we need. You need lyrics. Come on, you got to watch some TV shows and then we'll get some lyrics. Yeah, I also have to understand you have one member of the band who doesn't know how to work Dropbox, so she doesn't see all those uh, new songs that are sitting I there never, waiting. Yeah, just Dropbox, whatever. <laughs> There's like 15 covers sitting there waiting for you guys. You know, I think the two albums in there. Now that we're back, keep... we're gonna uh, we're gonna start concentrating on some of this new stuff. But new we're stuff. not. We're, we're we're, we're not quite yet done with the old stuff. We have two more weeks of union stories, folks. And, and Kevin still has pages. One of the songs is mine, and he still has a bunch of pages of notes. Because she'll get on here and not talk at all about the song, and won't even remember what song it is, and it's say not nothing true. about it. Yeah. It's so not next true. week we will be talking about Jerry's song, "Search, Search Engine, Engine Fire," Fire. Uh, which, if you haven't seen the video for it's our most recent single and video. It's out there. So uh, again, tonight we're talking about trips. If you uh, haven't heard it in a while, please stream it. It's available on all the streaming services out there. Uh, in advance of next week, you can stream Search Engine Fire or go look for the video, which is also here on our page. And uh, next, uh, next Tuesday night, 8 o'clock, uh, we'll be right here. And this time, we'll get the orientation right from the get-go. And uh, <laughs> you know, that, that way, we don't fumble people around for the first couple of We've seconds. We've never had our orientation correct. Never. Ever. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for joining and tuning in. Yeah.